Hi everyone, Ross here. Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the third part of a short series I've been working on for my custom Space Marine chapter, The Spectral Wolves. Now, if you've seen the other ones previously or looking at the images in front of you at the moment, um, I spent quite a lot of time trying to make them uh, as very clean and as perfect as I possibly could while I've been working on this army. And I thought I would try and do something a bit different with it and try and see if I could paint something using the same scheme but using a slightly different method and go for something a bit more weathered and a bit more um, sort of battle damaged um, just to see what I could see what I could do with the um, with the scheme and see if I could get something that would be look uh, done in a different method but could still fit in with the army so the perfect model to do this with is this guy which is the lieutenant with a combi weapon um, he is a standalone character he never joins up with a unit in the game if you're playing the tabletop game and just his sort of um, his look is slightly different to the rest of the marines and that he's got bits of tyranid stuck on him and he has a uh, he has the look of a kind of a, a lone fighter someone that's been left by himself and so it kind of felt quite fitting to kind of try and do something a bit different with him and it would sort of fit his background, I think, quite well to be um, sort of battle damaged and, and weathered looking. So as I've already sort of gone over the scheme a little bit in a previous video, the, um, I've, not, I've not filmed the, this initial stage of uh, getting the first colours down. So it's an Incubi Darkness base coat over the whole thing uh, with Rakarth flesh for the, the cream areas. If you want to kind of have a, a more detailed look at that, then go back and uh, watch one of the other videos that I've uh, that I put up recently. Um, so yeah, at the moment, this is really just the starting point. Um, just getting the base coats down and blocking in the black areas and everything so that's all dealt with first before I can start highlighting up the armour. And the highlights are going to be the thing that's going to really make the stand out from the rest of them. It's going to be the thing that's going to um, add that sort of worn uh, battle damage look to him. So this is what he looks like at this stage. All those areas sort of blocked in, ready to start working on him to, to get those highlights dealt with. Um, this is actually the second attempt. Um, I did try something completely, well, a slightly different version of this, which is what you can see right now. Now, it's not necessarily bad, but it wasn't working for me. Um, it was a slightly different method to what I'm going to use in the video, but the colours weren't right. It wasn't really what I wanted. It didn't fit in with the rest of the army properly. He was starting to look a little bit more like an ultramarine. Not that there's anything wrong with Ultramarines, but he was starting to look a little bit too blue. So I resprayed and started again. So just wanted to point that out that these things do not always work the first time. Not everything you see is always, you know, perfect. Now, normally when I'm painting this scheme, I use a, a thin down mix of uh, Black Legion with contrast medium in order to, to um, do the shading. And for this one, I wanted him to be sort of that more grimy dirty look so instead of using that i'm using um the similar same ratio but using rattling grime uh thinned down with contrast medium um to do the shading on the blue on the armor it's a really nice color and um, if you've ever tried mixing um agrax earthshade and nolan oil that sort of black and brown washes together you'll kind of know the sort of the similar color that it is it's kind of difficult to explain what it looks like um, but it really works for kind of uh, painting up dirty uh looking um armor and stuff so this first highlight for the blue is using the same method that I've used before when I'm trying to make them nice and clean and, and, and tidy, um, which is uh, Stegodon Stale Green and just using a really chunky highlight all the way around. I'm going to stick with that um, same method for this as the first starting point. Um, and yeah, this is what it looks like when that's done. So you get a little bit more blue tint on there with that highlight and the shading's done. You can start to see all the detail kind of popping out a little bit more. Um, so yeah, um, that's pretty much where I would normally be um, but this is where things are going to change slightly in the method I'm using. So the first stage to add all the um, the chipping and the damage and everything to the armor is to do to go around using um, Rhinox Hide on a sponge and just very slightly tapping it on over the armor um, just to kind of start adding some chip marks and uh, trying to catch it more around the, air, the edges of the armor and stuff there. Um, yeah, this is a really nice color. It's kind of like a, a sort of almost like a chocolate brown and it works really well for sort of showing like the undercoat underneath the paint um, where something's been scratched off. I use this a lot for vehicles and things as well. So this is a really good starting point anyway. And it adds some nice texture to the armor um, and it's a really good, yeah, it's a really good starting point for this. Um, I've then gone back in using a brush, um, which you can see now doing exactly the same thing, but just with a little bit more precision. That way I can kind of get those chips and those scratch marks and things exactly where I want them to be.
The next step for the highlights is to use the same colour that I would normally use for when I'm doing it nice and tidily, but using Sotec Green. And I'm just kind of going around with the brush and catching all the edges, um, but this time using uh, more of a, a sort of a tapping the brush onto the edges of there to get sort of dots and scratch marks and just to kind of get a more of a weathered rough look to the armour. And yeah, you can really start to see the damage now and the, the texture starting to come out on the armour. Um, I'm being quite sparing with it and the paint is, is very, uh, very thin as well. I've thinned this down quite heavily with water and I'm just going around quite slowly and deliberately where I'm putting um, with, with the brush just to kind of make sure that it's not overdone. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of add more than it is to take it away. So the best thing to do is just to kind of be quite sparing with it and then um, you can slowly build it up over time. Um, and then you can even layer those colours over the top of each other so some are more opaque and um, yeah it really does help to add to that look. I'm now doing exactly the same thing but using Temple Guard Blue and again being a little bit more, uh, a little bit more sparing with this um, than the Sotec Green as it's a little bit more of a vibrant colour. Um, and yeah, I'm just doing those those sort of tapping motions around the edges just to kind of help to, to bring that texture out onto the armour and, um, and add to the highlights on it. And yeah, this is what it looks like when that stage is done. Um, it's really got some nice texture to it and it's really starting to look damaged and, and worn. And this is a hell of a lot faster than uh, my normal method where I'm trying to be really precise and, um, and tidy and clean with it. So yeah, it, it, it is a lot faster. And yeah, the final step for the, uh, for the highlights for the armor is to use Baharoth blue. This is a really bright blue, so it has to be quite sparing. Um, but I'm just doing a few little dots here and there on the most raised points, just to kind of add to that chipping and uh, just to layer it up with the other colors. Um, but I also use this color to uh, use, do a little bit of freehand and kind of draw on um, some scratch marks as well, because uh, they, really they really stand out nicely against all the, all the darker blue. And it, it just, it really does help to look, um, to add that, that sort of damaged look onto the armor. Um, but again, I'm being quite sparing with that. I'm not going crazy. I'm not putting scratch marks all over it. It's just a few here and there just to kind of, uh, just, to, just to add to that detail of it. And that is the blue armor done, um, which is a record for me for painting one of these space marines in this uh, in this scheme. Um, yeah, it normally takes a hell of a lot longer than this. So yeah, really happy with this is how he's looking at the moment already. So as the next step, I then blocked in all of the leather bits and pieces. So on this guy, there's actually quite a lot of straps and pouches and things like that. So um, using the same colors from the normal scheme, how I'd normally paint them and using uh, Doom Ball Brown just to, to uh, put a base coat on all of those. Now, normally I would use non oil at this point, um, or any kind of black wash to kind of uh, to shade the the, uh, the leather bits on on these. But um, for this one, uh, leaning into the kind of the grimy look, I'm using uh, the thin down mix that I used before of uh, rattling grime uh, and contrast medium. Um, just to again, it, it sort of got a little bit more of a, a dirty sort of brown look to it. Um, so yeah, it works quite well with this. And then to highlight the leather, I'm then using Wazdaka Red for this. It's the same color that I used before on the previous video to do the highlights, but I'm using it again in the same sort of method that I used to, uh, to highlight the armor. So using the brush to kind of make tapping motions and to add scratch marks and just make it look a bit rougher, like this is kind of beaten up. It's not pristine and brand new. Normally when I'm highlighting the leather, when I'm trying to make it look nice and clean, I only use that one highlight color. 
but for this I've then gone one step higher um, by adding um, squig orange which is kind of really sort of nice pinky uh, light pink color um, and then doing this uh, doing some more uh, sort of scratch marks and things with that again being quite sparing with that and um, it just helps to kind of make it look aged and, and worn down And now on to highlighting the uh, the cream colour um, using my least favourite paint, which is uh, Pallid's of Witch Flesh. Um, yeah, it's not the best. It's it's quite chalky and not not the best to use. But quite a few people in the last couple of uh, videos that I've, I've put up have, have commented, give me some alternatives, which I've yet to try. But I've got more on my shopping list, so I'm I'm going to try them and uh, hopefully find something a little bit more um, user friendly. But yeah, this is the same sort of uh, ideas before. Um, just adding. Uh, chip marks and running the running that uh, that paint over those next to the the um, uh, the Rhinox hide marks that I've let, that I've put on and sort of it it helps to add to that sort of it makes it look like the paint's been chipped off um, around the the primer that's uh, showing through underneath. To add some highlights to the black, um, which is mainly really just the knee pads and the um, the rubber joints in between the armour, um, I'm using Dark Reaper. Um, I'm not adding this on with a brush at the moment, just kind of using a, a sponge to um, to stipple that onto the uh, onto the knee pads. Um, and being quite heavy with that actually, um, slightly more so than on the rest of the armour, because I kind of I wanted to make it kind of feel like he's been they've been scratched up quite badly because they've been he's been kneeling on them, you know, they've been sort of scraped on the ground, that sort of thing. Um, and then going back over the, the very edges using some Fenrisian grey as well uh, to add to the chipping around the edges of, the, of, the, um, of each of those plates. Now the next step was actually done off camera. Um, I painted up the Tyranid bits, so the bits on his arm and, on, and the dead uh, the dead Tyranid on the base, and I also did his face on here. Now I did those off um, off camera just because I still really struggle with painting faces on camera, um, which is I need to, I feel like I need to get it up closer to my face, and I'm still struggling with that. So apologies, but um, I, I, something I'm going to do in the future is to go over how I do faces. Um, I've got a few different methods, so I'll, I'll put a video together for that. Uh, and the Tyranid bit just again, it didn't feel necessarily relevant, so I kind of I've just done that off off camera. Um, but yeah, so the next step is just to, to block in the metal bits. So I'm using uh, dark aluminium for this one, um, just blocking those in and uh, ready for a wash afterwards. And I've also added a little bit of Retributor armor on there as well. So this trinket around his waist and also the handles for the knives as well. Um, it's it's just, it, it helps it to kind of tie in with the rest of my army because I've got a few other guys that have got knives and things and I've done them in the same color. Um, and also it just adds a little pop of color because otherwise it's there's not a lot going on otherwise. So it just kind of helps to make him stand out a little bit as a character as well. Um, so yeah, just it just adds that little extra extra color to the model. I've then used the same wash that I used previously, the, the thin down rattling grime, to put a wash over all of the metallics, the silver and the gold bits and pieces. Um, this helps to tie everything together. They all got the same wash over pretty much the entire thing. So, and yeah, obviously it just helps to shade those down. I also made the decision at this point not to bother to highlight the metallics. Um, I've I, I didn't want them to be too bright. I wanted to just keep everything dull and and dirty and grimy. So, no highlights on the metals um, on this one. Um, so yeah, just left them as they are. Um, and the last real thing to do is I gave everything a, a matte varnish and then did the blood effects on the uh, on the knives. I left this to the very end after the matte varnish because once this is dry it will keep uh, a glossy look and have the look of wet blood. Um, this is actually just a um, Citadel paint which is uh, blood for the blood god. Um, so I'm putting it on neat from the bottle on initially and then once it's on there I'll then mix in a little bit of water and kind of start to feather it out over the knife 
um, and it, it night this so this is actually slightly watered down at this point that I'm using um, it helps it to run into the recesses and it just it looks more realistic than having it sort of blotchy and thick on the on the blade so yeah it's a really nice paint actually it works really well it has a really nice realistic blood look And yes, this is the final result. Um, I honestly couldn't be happier. I think he came out really well. It's been really nice um, to do something different with the scheme and because um, I've got so used to painting it now, um, just to try something different and see how it looks. Um, and yeah, really pleased, really happy. Um, the, one, the only thing that's missing is the, uh, the decals. I need to get some um, at the moment. They're actually on the way in the post, so they'll be added at some point. But honestly, yeah, really, really pleased. And yeah, as you can see, he works really well with all the others. He's got a little bit more character, um, but he doesn't feel out of place. He still fits, he still works as part of the army. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and maybe hitting the notification bell. It'd be a massive help. And uh, yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon.